in order to be better, do better, be somebody better. Come on, somebody. You got to be able to take some stuff and, and give up some stuff and wade through some stuff and hold on through some stuff. Everything is not going to go your way all the time. Get that pacifier out of your mouth. Everything is not going to go your way all the time. Climb out of the playpen and live life. And handle your business. And handle your business with the faith, with faith in God, the favor of God, and with the fortitude that comes from the God who gives it so you can move forward and grow more in 2024. Are y'all here? I want to look at an unusual, unorthodox title, one that I'm sure I would probably be flunked in if I was taking homiletics class today, but those days are over, so I do what I want to do. Uh, I, I, I want to talk from the subject, the fortitude to go against in order to go for. Fortitude to go against in order to go for. Amen. Amen. Now, 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 I, I, I want to start out with an opening statement. And the opening statement is simply this. God's desire is that you and I or we grow through both our trials and our triumphs. To the degree that we develop tough skin and a tender heart to bring about more consistently, to bring about more consistently in how we courageously face all that life brings our way. Let me shorten that. Say that it is God's desire. That through both our trials and our triumphs, that we will grow up. Amen. That we will grow up to the point where you and I can be both tough enough and tender enough to develop a consistency in how we handle all that life brings us. God's desire. Lean it over to somebody and tell them God's desire, God's desire. is that you would grow up in how, how you handle all that life, all that life brings, you. brings you. Here's a text of scripture I want you to put in your pocket. Proverbs 10, I'm sorry, 24, 10. If we faint, the first part, if we faint in the day of adversity, it only means that our strength is small. God's desire for you and for me is that we grow up in how we handle whatever life brings us in a more consistent manner. When things are up, we're up. But when things are down, we're down. And God is saying, I want you to either be up or down. Are y'all here? Revelation says, I'd rather you to be hot or cold. But because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. God is getting sick and tired of us being environmental, conditional Christians. You need the fortitude to grow up. In order to live in this manner, we must possess fortitude, which means the strength of mind that enables a person to encounter danger or bear pain or adversity with courage. The strength of mind that enables a person 
to encounter danger or bear pain or adversity with courage. Fortitude is all about strength of character that is upheld by the strength of convictions that, that, that is governed and guided, amen, that governs and guides our conduct as we interface with a Christless culture. This season calls for believers who are not scared. Look at somebody square in the eyes and tell them I ain't scared. Boom. See, some of y'all ready to run already. This season calls for believers of determination, strength, and perseverance. The dividing line between those that conquer and those that will be conquered just may be in how much a person can endure and how a person endures. The race. Is not given to the swift. Neither is the battle to the strong. They part of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse number 11. This past week, we got to see a stirring, staring, sterling, shining example of fortitude. We got to see it if it was only if our eyes were open and our ears were open. We got to see such an example at its best in the life of Russia's Mandela or Martin Luther King. When that life came to a tragic end, but also a triumphant end, Alexei Navalny stood on principles and he died for his principles. He stood against a murderous dictatorial regime led by Mr. Putin with courage, bravery, humor, maturity, and even when he fully recovered from being poisoned, amen, he left the comfort of Germany, went back to the belly of the beast in Russia only to be rearrested and later moved to a penal colony in Siberia in sub-zero temperatures. Why? Because his commitment to his cause was mightier than his commitment to his convenience. Amen. And even though people were warned not to publicly mourn, mourn his death and attend his funeral, thousands made their way to the church, to the gates of the church. And over 400 were arrested. Why? Because just one person possessed by an idea that he allowed to possess him, his fortitude, somebody holler fortitude, his fortitude moved a people, aroused a people, awakened a people, and even agitated the power. See, you can't, you, you can't handle free people. Either in their life or their death. If you're free, it's as if you're already dead. Okay, if you're free, you're saying, I don't care what you say about me. Come on, somebody. If you're free, you don't care what people are talking about behind your back. Because it's as if you are dead. How much can you take? That's a good question. How much can you take? Remind me of that old boy trying to get his girl. And he whispered in his ear, said, honey, for you, I'll, I'll, I'll climb the highest mountain. And I'll swim across the deepest, widest ocean. And if it don't rain, I'll come see you. <laughs> How much can you take? Can you ask somebody that? Look at them right in the face. Says, How much can you take? <laughs> for Navali, for King, for Evers, for Malcolm, for Gundy, for Paul, and for Jesus, it took their lives. Yes. How much can you take? Stand up. Stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. How much can you take? How much can you take? See, in order to be something better, do something to better, and to be somebody better, you've got to be willing to take some stuff. Amen. Give up some stuff. Amen. Weigh through some stuff. And hold on through some stuff. Are y'all with me here? I said, I said, in order to be better, do better, be somebody better, come on somebody, you got to be able to take some stuff and, and give up some stuff and weigh through some stuff and hold on through some stuff. 
Fortitude demands purpose, perseverance, and persistency. This is the introductory message. So if we live long, we will grow old. But how many of us will grow old? Come on now. It's time to put on your big girl clothes or your big boy britches and handle your business. And handle your business with the faith, with faith in God, the favor of God, and with the fortitude that comes from the God, so the, the God who gives it, so you can move forward and grow more in 2024. Amen. Are y'all here? Amen. Now y'all need to realize something. You need to realize something right quick. Everything is not going to go your way all the time. Get that pacifier out of your mouth. Everything is not going to go your way all the time. Climb out of the playpen and live life. In life, there will be some setbacks. But if you mature, you realize that setbacks are just a setup. Come on, somebody, for comebacks. Go on, tell somebody, setbacks... It's just an opportunity for a comeback. Now look at them, tell them, I'm coming back. Anybody been down, but you're on your way back up? Anybody been sick, but God raised you back up? Anybody been through something recently, but God brought you out of it? Come on and grow up. Get tired of whippish, spineless believers. Amen, somebody. Amen. There will be losses. There will be seasons of lack. There will be heartbreaks and heartaches, as well as opposition, obstacles, and obstinate people, obstinate people. But like Paul said to Timothy, God did not give you the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Come on, somebody. And instead of caving into fear, let's harness and use the power that God gave us, operate in the love that God gave us, and please operate in a sound mind. Some of us have lost our sound mind, and we're going around just making sounds with our mouths. Forge your head with boldness and bravery. To make the impossible possible and the unrealized a realization. Well, that's what Noah did. And that is what we are called to do. Noah possessed the kind of faith plus favor that gave him the fortitude to move against the tithe and the stream of popular culture. To forge a new reality. Notice. Notice his faith. Right there in Hebrews 11, 7. By faith, Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen. Move with godly fear. Prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Notice. Notice chapter 6 of Genesis. But Noah found grace a favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah, Noah was a just man. Perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. Are y'all listening in? You see, when you have faith in God and the favor of God, Paul informs me you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Are y'all here? Now, now, the reason why some of y'all are not on the soul train yet is because you don't need God's strength if you're not doing anything that requires God's strength. But God is calling us as ordinary saints and soldiers to do extraordinary exploits. Go on and touch somebody and say, honey, you ain't seen nothing yet. Go on and tell them, you can't stand me now. You won't be able to take me two weeks from now. Nor, nor, nor possess three essential qualities that makes the impossible possible. He had 
Faith in God. Let the church say faith in God. See, no, nor dare to believe in God and nor dare to take God at his word. And after all, that's what faith really is, is taking God at his word. Nor had a high view of God. He, he trusted the God of creation. He trusted the God of communication. And he trusted the God of companionship. Because God walked with him and he walked with God. Not only did he have faith in God. Hear me now. Nor had the fear of God. He reverenced God, nor knew that God said what God meant and what God meant, God said. God said he would destroy the world and nor to God at his word. He had faith in God. He possessed the fear of God. And because of his faith in God and his fear in God, he was able to move with fortitude. Somebody holler fortitude. Check this out. He built and preached for 120 years. He preached the same sermon for 120 years. I said the same sermon. Remind me of Jeremiah. God only gave Jeremiah one sermon. Same sermon. He, 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 he reverenced God. He, he preached that sermon for 120 years and he built on that ark. He built, watch this, he built what had never been built before. For what had never happened before. That's rain and flood in a season that was contrary to it even happening because it was dry and hot. Now, 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 against a culture that mocked him, criticized him, maligned him, marginalized him for preaching 120 years of labor. And all he had to show for it was an ark, some animals, and his family in the midst of a dry season. Am I talking to somebody there? <laughs> you have been in a dry season for a while. But you got to keep on building. You got to keep on preaching. Come on, somebody. You got to keep on being consistent. Amen, somebody. You, get, you got to get up every day, hit the clock. Come on, somebody. Do what God called you to do. When it seems like there's no change, that nothing different is going to happen. I need somebody in a dry seat. Listen, your marriage can be going through a dry season. You don't walk out. You stay there. Your job may be taking you through a dry season. Don't you quit. You got too many bills. Stay there. Can I see the hand of somebody going through a dry season right now? I, I want to I shout out to you. Don't quit. Get up tomorrow morning. Wash up. Put on your clothes. Go and face the reality of your life. And say, I'm going to be faithful to the God who's been faithful to me. Faithful to his task. Faithful to his assignment. And he was faithful. God is looking for a people. Or for a person that's willing, watch this, to take a project for his purpose that will help some people and give God praise in the midst. And here it is. The project will force you to go against the stream and sometime Go alone if you have to. The fortitude to go against reminds me of the Solomon. It's the fish that's known for, for swimming upstream against insurmountable odds. Somebody hollered the Simon. Yes, it swims upstream to fulfill a God-given instinct to reach both its feeding and its breeding grounds. Salmons are famous for their fighting spirit. Some of us have lost our fighting spirit. Or we fight the wrong things. They, 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 the Simon is, they, they, the, the, 
they, they battle currents and, and they leap across rapids and, and up waterfalls as high as 10 feet. Water is coming down, but they are what? Swimming up. And even when you hook one of those bad boys, they, they struggle, they struggle to escape. Even when the salmon spawn, they, they, they do this during the, 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 the summer and the, and the autumn after swimming upstream as far as 2,000 miles from the ocean. What a wonderful illustration of courage and fortitude to go against something in order to go for something. They have to go against the current and the stream. Come on, somebody. To go for their feeding. Are y'all here? See, sometimes God calls us to go against in order to go for. Y'all remember the Israelites, don't you? In order to go and possess the promised land, they had to fight against the giants and all of the ites that were in the land. But you do remember, ten spies were scared. And y'all know what? The spirit of cowardice is contagious. It spreads quicker than COVID, mumps, and measles put together. It'll cause a whole generation to die in the wilderness except two brothers. Come on, somebody. With four or two named Joshua and Caleb. What is it that God is calling you to? What is it that God is calling you to do? That in order to fulfill the assignment... It's going to require you to go against some things. Watch this. It may even require you to go against some people. It may require you to go against some systems. It may require you to go against some empires. It may require you to go against, amen, some stuff. But, but God says if you go against it, I got something at the end of what you go against. You're going to get what you're going for. So looking at Noah, I got three or four things and we're about to be out of here. And looking at Noah, what did Noah possess that made him a person with fortitude? Oh yeah, we talked about faith in God. We talked about faith in God. We talked about the fear of God. But what about this fortitude thing? Number one, a person of fortitude is willing to work and walk alone. If you're taking notes, come on, write that down. A person of fortitude is willing to work or walk alone. Uh, this is what I call, watch this, the spirit of solitude. The spirit of solitude. A person of fortitude, their commitment must to the project got to be greater than their commitment to pride and popularity. Yeah, yeah. See, whenever you choose to follow the Jesus of justice, you'll sign up, amen somebody, you sign up for lonely, solitary work. Yes, the walk of a person with fortitude often makes them stand out from the common and from the culture. Amen. And that at times can be hazardous to your health, your wealth, and even your breath. Imagine Noah preaching to an unbelieving culture a message warning, a message of warning that, that could have saved them, but, but, and at the same time building what nobody had seen before, but he had a purpose that nobody understood. So he stood alone. I, I'm reminded the Canton spirit to say, I'll go. Y'all know when to wake up. If I have to go by myself. Uh, several years ago, there was a billboard that was popular, and I believe it was a commercial too, a, 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 a fireman, and, and it was very inspirational to me. And, and the billboard simply, simply, simply had on it a picture of a fireman, and it had, watch this, it had under it, it had under it this, when others ran out, they ran in. Thank God for first responders. How many of y'all remember stories surrounding 911? Amen, somebody. When people were trying to run out of the building or jump out of windows, come on, somebody, as the building was crumbling, there were first responders running in. That, 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 that's an illustration of fortitude. 
Noah, watch this, built the ark basically by himself. His neighbors and his friends might have chipped in, we don't know, but for the most part, they left him alone. And sometimes that's the best place folk can leave. <laughs> Some of y'all said that this week. I know you love your children, but sometimes they get on your reserve nerve and you say, just leave me. Go on, tell somebody, look at them and say, I love you, but leave me alone. See, I learned something, Pastor Greg Milton, amen, as a band director, in order to lead the orchestra, you got to turn your back on the crowd. And God right now, amen, is trying to get somebody, amen, somebody, to lead his orchestra, but you're too uh, uh, intoxicated with the crowd. You've got to be a person that's committed to a spirit of solitude. How many of y'all sometimes work best when ain't nobody around? Sometimes you are at your best. Come on, somebody, when it's just you and God, not having people all in your ear, trying to get in your head, trying to rearrange your plans. Come on, somebody, tell somebody, leave me alone. And some of you are scared of silence and stillness. I've said this many times from this pool, but I might as well say it again. That, that, that's why you have everything on in your house, in rooms you have not been in. TV on in the bedroom. TV on in the kitchen. Ready your own. In the second bedroom, there ain't nobody in. Because you, 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 you got to hear noise. You're scared of silence and stillness. But sometimes God is going to push you. Come on, somebody. Sometimes God is going to pressure you. Sometimes God is going to program you that some things you've got to walk alone. Secondly, secondly, a person of fortitude. Somebody said fortitude. But I don't want to be committed to walk and work alone with that solitude spirit. But secondly, they must possess a steadfast spirit. I hear Paul screaming in my ear, said, Larry, tell him this. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. Come on, somebody. In the work of the Lord. Nor for 120 years worked, built, and preached. Can y'all help me with that? He did what? That's year one. Come on. Year 10. Word, build, and preach. Year 100. Word, build, and preach. Year 120. Word, build, and preach. Now, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, where would you have fallen out? Some of y'all, after you, you would have made it to year one. <laughs> he was committed because he possessed a steadfast spirit. Are y'all listening to me? I mean consistently, persistently, insistently. He, he was dedicated. He was devoted. He was determined and he would not be distracted or detoured or deterred. He stayed on the task with his eyes on the prize. He was faithful to the finish. He was relentless. He was responsible. He was reliable. If God called you to a task, don't abandon it. Don't abort it and don't avoid it. Look, go and tell somebody, say, neighbor, if God call you to it, he'll see you through it. Don't you abandon it. Don't you abort it. And don't you avoid it. Somebody give God praise. Some of y'all need to be like a stamp. Come on, somebody. Stay there until the mail is delivered. Way may be rough to go and may be tough. The hills may be hard to climb. But if you start it out, stay with what you started with. I, I meet people almost every other day seemingly change. And they say they're going to do something, they change. Say they're going to do something, they're going to change. Say they're going to do something, they're going to change. But stay with it. Yes. Noah stayed with it. That's fortitude. Let me give you a third one. 
person of fortitude, Amen. person that's willing to work, walk alone. Can I just say something about that? Don't be scared to even walk by yourself. Amen. This is not popular. But don't jump in a relationship just for the sake of having somebody to walk with you. Amen. You don't have to have a man. You don't have to have a woman. Are y'all here? I know, I, I know, I know what Aretha saying. Bless her heart. You make me feel like a natural woman. But God made you a natural woman. Some of y'all just, I ain't talking about nobody in here, but some folk. You just have to have somebody. So you settle for just the first thing to come along. My God. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them, don't settle. You know what happened to the Alcacelsa who settled? He dissolved. Some of y'all get that a little later. Some of y'all a little young. Come on, somebody. You don't know what an Alcacelsa is. person of fortitude person that has a steadfast spirit Amen. person who sold out if need be to solitude spirit spirit of solitude but that's the third thing I almost finished that's the third thing person of fortitude is a person not only the solitude spirit steadfast, but a salvific spirit it's in the text. He prepared the ark, notice, for the saving of his household. The project, the project, the project upon which he embarked had a redemptive purpose. That's why I love it when, 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 when upon hearing uh, just this past week, when I heard about our local superintendent said he was going to close the virtual school, some disturbed parents with fortitude made their signs, walked out in front of the school board office on Vaughn Road with those signs, amen, braved that weather, made their sentiments known, went to the board meeting, come on somebody, and guess what? The superintendent recanted. Come on somebody. And gave the virtual school a stay of execution. See, things happen when you make things happen. And there are some things, watch this, we need to agitate for. Some of us are too quiet. Come on, somebody. We let folk run all over us, walk all over us, but every now and then you need to stand up and say, no, no more. I've had enough. My child is worth me getting out here and sacrifice anybody. Do I have any parents in here who will fight for the rights of your child or your children? Do I have any parents in this room? Come on, somebody, that will brave the elements, walk up and down with a sign saying, my child's education is worthwhile. Stop taking everything that people give you. Fortitude. You know what? I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to get to my last point and get to my seat. What's worth saving? Text says that Noah built the ark for the saving of his family. What length are you going to make sure that your family is saved? Who besides your generation and your family are you reaching out to save? Amen. I, 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 I like this thing about Noah because I looked at it, amen, closely. It says he built the ark, prepared the ark for the saving of his household. Get this, ladies and gentlemen. Two generations. Noah, 
is three sons and their spouses. Two generations. But in those two generations going into the ark, because the sons had wives, there was the possibility and the high probability that they would have children. I'm going somewhere with this. So when we prepare and build the ark, we're building it for the generations that are present, but also for the possibility of unknown, unborn generations. That's why even when you leave an inheritance, the Bible commands us to leave an inheritance to our children and our children's children. When you die, and you will, what you going to leave, not just to your children, but to your children's children. To the unborn generation that you even may not see. What are you doing that will bless others? I would hazard my life in an ark now so that I can be a blessing to those I have not seen yet. Amen. What are you, some of y'all are not going to leave a, a will. You're going to leave a won't. You won't get this or you won't get that. What? 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 He built an ark. He had the fortitude. The courage, the boldness, the determination to build an ark for the saving of his household. I say this now, I close. I thank God. You know, somebody asked me the other day, said, Pastor Kevin, are you going to come into, you going to open up school again from K through three and you, you're doing some other stuff. And I said, yeah, that's right. I'm doing, I'm doing, because I'm learning, and I've said this before, I'm learning to plant trees whose shade I never will sit that's on. Right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Go and tell somebody, I'm all right. I'm all right. Tell them again, I don't have all I need to have, right. but I'm all right. But what I'm doing now is to make sure that somebody else will be all right who comes after me. May all that come behind us find us faithful. King's dream about a better country and about the country being better for his children. Watch this. He was dreaming about that while he was working. He was dreaming about a better tomorrow while he was trying to make a better today. Amen. That's right. Noah was trying to save himself, his wife, and his children today. Come on, somebody. But he was thinking about a better tomorrow. Amen. Can you build yourself, build for yourself a better today while at the same time build, work for building a better tomorrow? Mm. Or are you just so sophomoric and selfish? That's right, that's right, that's right. And self centered. Last thing, last thing, last thing, last thing. Fortitude, solitary spirit, steadfast spirit, salvific spirit. But here's the, here's the last thing a sensitive spirit. Oh, Noah was a man of faith, a man of favor, a man of fear. But also he was a person whose eyes, watch this, was on the future. Amen. He heard God's weather report. Mm. <laughs> yeah. God said in the words of the sensational nightingales, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. You better get ready. Bear this in mind. Amen. How many of y'all are hearing God's weather report? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And upon hearing God's weather report, the text says he built an ark that could take him through the flood. Mm -hmm. He heeded God's warning. Mm -hmm. And there's something, there's something, there's something, there's something that's eerie. There's something that's distasteful. There's something that is uh, 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 irritating. There's something that's agitating. There's something that is interrupting about an alarm or siren. It's one of the worst sounds you want to hear. Especially if you're in the midst of doing something 
that you that, that's important to you. Yeah, I remember a few, 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 few months ago, we were having 1045 service. I never forget it was a day we were celebrating since Bonnie's mother's birthday. Never forget that. We had a hurricane or something come. And uh, I, I think I was in the middle of my message. And then lights start flashing. I said, that didn't come to the sermon. I haven't finished my sermon yet. I stayed up all night. On Mondays, I start on, sometimes on Sundays, I start off thinking about what's going to happen the next Sunday in terms of sermons. And I begin to try to put the 8 o'clock sermon to bed by Wednesday, amen, somebody, and the 1045 service sometime, amen, by, but to bed by Friday, and I, I write sometime early Sunday morning. And after all that, <laughs> all that preparation, I get up and I know it, it's going to slam. It's going to be an award winning sermon. And Mom Barney was here. They brought in the wheelchair. The grandchildren were here. Relatives were here. We were excited about her birthday. I looked around and I tried to fake it off. I said, what's going on? And then people running outside. It's getting dark out there. Y'all know how us is it. We can be very dramatic. <laughs> Reverend, there's a good dog out there. He had to shut it down. Because it was irritating. It was disruptive. It was interrupted. Come on, somebody. But we heeded it. Because we believed what the weather report said. Yes, yes, amen. And may I close by saying there's a storm out on the ocean. Amen. And it's moving this way. And if your soul is not anchored, I need three folk. If your soul is not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Sometimes God calls us to go against in order so we can go for. And some of y'all right now, you're scared. Because God is challenging you. Watch this. To possess the promised land that I have given you. Tell somebody, it's yours. Come on. The degree is yours. The career is yours. The job is yours. The business is yours. But there are some ites in the land. There are some giants in the land. You got to fight for what is yours. So God baptized us with some grit, some guts, some backbone. So that we can go after what's ours. By going against anything that stands in the way what God has for us. What God has for me. It is for me. What God has for me. It is for me. But I may have to go against something in order to possess or get what God has for me.